Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I must say it's a joy to be here tonight. I express appreciation to the director and the planning team and the workforce of the director. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. What is it tonight? I'm not here to preach to anybody. I'm here to fight. We're here to fight against any power that does not want you to move forward. We want to fight against any power that is against this institution. I want to fight against any power that is contesting your destiny. So as I'm standing here, I will need your prayer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So anything you are going to do here tonight, do it aggressively. Do it with all your heart. Amen. I want you to sing this song to the glory of the name of the Lord. Let your voice be loud as you sing this song to the glory of God. Let nobody's voice overshadow your voice. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing in that love. Close our eyes and let your amen be dynamic as I pray now. Thank you so much, praise band. God bless you. Let your amen be dynamic as I pray now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for this gathering of your champions here. Thank you for this special gathering of your children here. Thank you for this institution. 
Thank you for the leadership of the institution. Thank you for what you have been doing in this institution. And thank you for what you shall continue to do in this institution. Father, we are gathered here to you tonight. Your word says, unto you shall the garden of your people be. Lord, as many of your children as are here tonight, let them be candidates of uncommon testimonies. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy upon your life tonight at any challenge that you have been going through, any trouble the enemy has been bringing your way, any infection in the land of your life, any problem in the land of your life, right now as I'm praying, receive divine solution in the name of Jesus. Let the power that breaketh every yoke, break every yoke presented here tonight in the name of Jesus. It is written, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down every imagination and every eye thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity all thoughts to the obedience of Christ. Every stronghold presented here tonight. Whether it is stronghold within, whether it is stronghold without, we pull them down in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud. And right there where you are, whatever breakthrough your destiny requires, receive it now. Receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Any power that has hijacked the destiny of anyone, any power that has stolen the virtue of anyone, any power that has stolen the brain of anyone, right there where such people are tonight, repossess your possession. Repossess them. 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 In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Lay your hands upon us. Anoint us by your power. And at the end of everything, let us glorify your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, the only one who is worthy to be praised. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Where you are seated, I want you to turn to three persons. And point to them. And tell them, my friend, God shall pursue your helpers to you. Say it to three persons. Say it to three persons. Turn to three persons again and shout at them. I say, my friend, your star will arise and shine. Say it to three persons in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, finally, I'd like you to stand up. Look for seven persons and tell them, any power that wants you to die shall die in your place. In the name of Jesus. Say to seven persons. Shout hallelujah. Let's have a seat again. God bless you. Let's open our Bible to Psalm 68. I'm reading just the first verse. Psalm 68 verse 1. Provoking divine intervention. Provoking divine intervention. Psalm 68 verse 1. Ask this to say. Let God arise. And let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him. Flee before him. I read that again. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before his face. A very popular scripture. A very powerful prayer. A very pregnant verse of scripture. Let God arise. And then let the enemies of God be scattered. 
let them that hate the Almighty now flee from before his face. It was from this verse we got that popular song. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. Now turn to somebody and say, Let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Let God, let God. Amen. Provoking divine intervention. A time will come in a person's life. If the time has not already come, when the greatest thing you are going to need in your life is for God to answer your prayers. A time comes in the person's life when you've tried everything you know how to try and you find that there is no way out and you need to call down a divine intervention God is a man of war God never loses battles God has his way in the wind and in the wild wind God can do anything at any time for anybody God never lies. God cannot be put in a test tube and used as an experiment. God cannot promise and not fulfill what he has promised. These are characters of the almighty God. God does not recognize impossibility. In the dictionary of the almighty, the word impossibility does not exist. For the Bible says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. These are the characters of the Almighty. But another character of God is that God can be provoked into action. When you need for something to happen, when you need for miracles to happen in your life that will move your destiny forward, you can actually provoke the Almighty into action. I see somebody here tonight your prayer will provoke divine action. That amen is not loud enough. God can be provoked into action. When we say provoke, by provoke we mean to stimulate into action. Even if something didn't want to move before, provocation can move the thing to do what the thing should do. Shout hallelujah. I could remember as small boys in Yaba in those days. There used to be a place called Railway Compound. In the Railway Compound, there are beautiful fruits, beautiful trees, mango, everything growing there. So as small boys, we used to go there to pluck, to pluck mangoes. We arrive at this beautiful compound to pluck mangoes. Me and my friends. As we got to the compound, we were throwing stones at those ripe mangoes. We did not know that the owner of that house had a large bulldog. So the man just released the bulldog. From the corner of my eye, I saw this giant dog galloping towards us. What can I do now? Before that day, I have never climbed a tree in my life. But when I saw this dog coming, all I could remember was that I found myself at the top of the tree. How I got there, I did not know. The sight of the dog provoked me into action. God can be provoked into action. A time comes in your life. A time comes in the life of an institution. A time comes in the life of individuals. A time comes in the life of a family when what you need to move forward is divine intervention. What is divine intervention? Divine intervention is God coming through the front door where you are expecting by the back door. What is divine intervention? Divine intervention is for God to come at a time you do not expect him to give you a miracle. 
What is divine intervention? Divine intervention is when you've tried everything you know how to try. And nothing is working. All of a sudden, something happens and everything will change completely. What is divine intervention? Divine intervention is when God sends a courier letter to all the enemies that are troubling your life and asks them to leave you alone. What is divine intervention? Divine intervention is the God whom you serve to suddenly come into the temple of your life. What is divine intervention? Divine intervention is for God to come to your help when man cannot help you again. Nothing can help you again. Everything they put together cannot help. All of a sudden, God comes in to help you. That is what is called divine intervention. I see somebody here tonight. Divine intervention is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. I see somebody here tonight. Your days of sorrows and tears are over. For there shall be divine intervention. There are some going through troubles they cannot share with people. They are going through silent crying. They are not crying outside. They are crying inside. Because they cannot talk to people about it. Tonight, there shall be divine intervention. Divine intervention is when God demonstrates his sovereign power. His power as the Almighty is demonstrated on your behalf. Divine intervention is signs and wonders that you cannot explain. You don't expect it, but it has come now. You cannot explain. Divine intervention is miraculous experiences that will bring joy to your life. The Bible says, the God whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, God will suddenly come to the temple of somebody today. Divine intervention. This thing that I'm telling you happened in the Nairobi, Kenya. As a small girl, this small girl used to help the parents to sell oranges, banana after school. She came from a poor home. A poor home, but a prayerful home. There is a park, a park outside Nairobi in Kenya. A park. And outside that park, she plucks mango, she plucks things to sell. This girl did not know that she was about to be kidnapped by ritual killers. So these ritual killers, three of them, they kidnapped this small girl. And bandaged her mouth. They tied her legs. Put her down. Two of them stood by her. One went to get the car. This girl was shouting. But because her mouth was bandaged, she couldn't shout much. So just making pee, 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 pee. She's trying to sh shout. But the bandage in her mouth did not allow her to shout. But as she was doing that, there was a murder lion in the forest. The murder lion was hearing this cry. The murder lion thought a baby lion was in trouble. So the mother lion came out and was marching towards these two men and the girl. When the men saw the lion coming, nobody taught them what to do. They fled. The lion went for the girl. As these men fled, they were feeling sorry for the girl. I said, oh, what kind of unlucky girl is this? We wanted to reach, reach her, use her for ritual. And we couldn't carry her away. Now a lion will eat her up. The men ran away. But when the lion got to this little girl, the lion laid down by her side and was watching her. Amen. Meanwhile, the man, the man who went to bring the car came. <laughs> when the man who went the car came, when who went to bring the car came and saw the little girl lying side by side with a lion, he to ran. So all the three kidnappers ran away. After about one hour or so, the forest guards, the forest guard now came with their gun. When the lion saw the forest guard appearing with their gun, the lion just walked into the bush and left the girl alone. That was our divine intervention saved that girl. I see somebody here tonight. Divine intervention is coming your way. The Almighty shall arise for your sake. He will disgrace your disgrace. Then, if you are here, and enemies have put a limit in your life. They have told you this is how far you can go. This is how far they go in your family. So you can't go beyond this. You will receive power tonight. That will move you forward. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, let your amen be loud. That's the power of divine intervention. 
divine intervention is when God all of a sudden comes and does something in your life that your enemy will open their mouth and could not close it. Divine intervention comes your way when everything you know how to try, you have tried it. You've struggled, you've done this, you've done that, but you cannot find a way out. But God just comes and says, okay, that is what is going to happen to you now. Get it, get this, get that. And people who saw you before, when they now see you today, they wonder, where are you coming? Are you the same person? Then you become an argument. So this is so, so, and so. Say, no, it's not her. This is it's not him. That shall be your lot in the name of Jesus. Many years back, when I was in my, my former church, many, many years ago, a young man just came to me and said, uh, uh, Dr. Lukoya, God said, you are going to pray for me and I will get a scholarship and I will travel abroad. I said, but God has not told me that one. No. I said, but that's what God told me. I said, okay, what is my role in this man? I said, God said you should be praying for me every day that I see you. So this man was coming to me for prayers. If I have plenty of people to see and I say, please go home. He said, no, sir, I'll wait for you to finish. Please go. I'll wait for you to finish. We prayed for one year or more. And he was coming every day. He got to a level. Sometimes when I see the man coming, I, I feel like running away. Because he was always coming. So you can imagine my joy the day this man came and said, Dr. Lukoya, I got a scholarship. This is my passport. This is my visa. I'm traveling. Ah, I was so happy for him. So, so happy. I said, kneel down. Let me pray for you. I prayed for him for 15 minutes so that he won't come back and trouble me again. So he now took his passport, took everything, he traveled. As he traveled, he landed in one airport. From that airport, he was to take another plane to the place he was going. Immediately he landed at the first airport as they were coming out of the aeroplane. Police were waiting. Immediately he came out. They said, this is a man. And they arrested him. <laughs> they put handcuffs in his hand and they were leading him away. It was very embarrassing. It was very shameful. As they led him through that foreign airport, he was shouting loud and clear to anybody who could hear. He said, ha, 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 ha. Upon all the prayer that Dr. Luko, you pray for me. This is what has happened to me here. Ah, upon all the prayer. I'm sure in that airport, they'll be wondering, who is Dr. Lukoya? Why is this man shouting upon all the prayer? Anyway, they locked him up that night in the police cell. He cried throughout the night. It was in the morning when he woke up and he saw the newspapers. And he started dancing. The flight he was supposed to take from that airport to the next place had crashed. That crashed. Everyone there died. In fact, they thought he was in the plane. Whereas they didn't know that he's been arrested. So when the police now came back in the morning, say, sorry, sir. Uh, mistaken identity. Say, uh, say, actually, say, actually, you are not the one we wanted to arrest. Is somebody else, but you just look like that person. Say, so we're sorry, we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience. They were begging him. They were saying, We hope you will not take us to court. The man said, Court. <laughs> God, don't you see the newspaper? So that man would have died if not for that divine intervention. Divine intervention is coming your way today. Your life shall be a testimony to the glory of the name Jesus Christ. Your life shall be a testimony. That is what we mean by divine intervention. When you know that anytime you try to smile, smiles are disappeared. People are telling you to forget God. People are even mocking your prayers. Anytime you try to go forward, something is dragging you backward. Anytime you try to make progress, something will say, no, you can't go forward. Your eyes are already red from crying. Anytime good things want to happen, you have a very strange dream and everything you want to do just scatters. Anytime you think that something is going to work, expectation is just cut off. Anytime that uh, you gather amongst people and you are supposed to be celebrated, you find that they will be blaming you instead. There is something you need. You need that divine intervention. You have prayed, you have fasted, 
you've done all kinds of things, but it will appear as if the enemy is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Then you need a divine intervention. When you cry to the Lord tonight, because I told you we're here to fight. So this is a very short message. <laughs> when you cry to the Lord tonight and ask him to intervene, he can intervene in any way. If there are forces that do not want you to move forward and you call God to arise, when God arises, anything can happen to those forces. I see somebody here. The power that has been battling your destiny shall be buried alive today. That amen is not loud enough. The power of divine intervention. When the enemy has pushed you down to the zero level, there's something you call zero level. Zero level. Zero level is when all your efforts are finished. They are gone. There's nothing you can get again because the enemy has pushed you to that zero level. Then you need that divine intervention. When people are already laughing at you and members of your family are saying that, well, <laughs> you have been praying. What is the result? What is the result of the prayer now? You need that divine intervention. The prayers of tonight, they are not prayers for gentlemen. They are prayers for those who are not ready to take no for an answer. Those who want to fight and possess their possession. I want you to understand that as you move from place to place, as you move from country to country, the powers that are controlling the place, they are different. As you move from nation to nation, the powers controlling nations are different. As you move from family to family, the powers controlling families are different. The kind of prayer that you, the Americans will pray, it's not the kind of prayer you will pray here if you want to get results. The Nigerian demon will not listen to your American English. The crude, illiterate demon will not listen to your Oxford accent. You need well-targeted, well-constructed prayers, relevant to your environment, to get results. For example now, if you have ever gone to India, in India you see plenty of hungry people, people who are in poverty, but you see fat, fat cows walking about. Cows. Fat cows. You cannot, you cannot kill the cow, because the cow is regarded as a god, as an idol. That is their demon that they worship. In Nigeria here, we don't have that kind of demon. In Nigeria here, even if you put cow at the front of your house, and you don't look after it very well, you may wake up in the morning and find that the cow had disappeared. You could read in a foreign newspaper that somebody took a gun, he shot, he shot all the students in the class, and then shot the teacher, and shot himself. That is a foreign demon. That doesn't happen in Nigeria. That's not our demon. In, the, uh, in some countries abroad, a woman can take a baby and put the baby inside the oven and switch it on. Here, we don't do that. It's not our demon. The African woman will not put his child inside an oven and turn the oven up. up. No, that's not our demon. Our demon is that, that that mother will be drinking the blood, small, small, and will be taking the baby to the hospital. That's our own demon. <laughs> so, as you go from place to place, things vary. Oh, you could see that in many countries abroad, People commit suicide. Suicide is not a Nigerian demon. Many Nigerians do not want to die. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you this. So you know how to, how to construct your prayers here today. Construct your prayers. If you, you, if you know the forces you are fighting, then you know how to pray. There was a day, <laughs> one general of us here, older than myself, called me on the phone. Dr. Lukoya, come, 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 come. Come and talk to my son, Theophilus. Theophilus wants to commit suicide. Dr. Lukoya, come, come, come. Come and talk to Theophilus. Theophilus wants to commit suicide. So I ran there. When I got there, I found them holding this young man. They said, let me die. Let me die. But when I looked at the man, the young man that is saying, let me die. Let me die. The rope was tied to his waist. Amen. So, and also they are laughing. I said, daddy, <laughs> he doesn't want to die. <laughs> Those who want to die, they don't tie rope on the waist. <laughs> His neck, they put it. <laughs> he doesn't want to die. They say it's not a Nigerian demon. The other time, too, a one, one madam came to me and I said, Gio, last year I tried to kill myself. I tried to kill myself. I drank poison. I tried to kill myself. And, uh, but uh, I didn't succeed in killing myself. I tried to commit suicide. I said, ah, 
Why you wanted to kill yourself? Why did you do it? Say, I drank a, a whole bottle of Benilin cough syrup. I said, oh. <laughs> I said, Madam, don't they have battery charger at the front of your house? So if you really want to die, <laughs> it's not cough syrup you will drink. <laughs> they sell acid. Drink it. So that's not a Nigerian demon. So when we say pray today, know that the prayer, the intervention you are looking for, you are facing something that is locally attacking your life. And you should deal with it like that. That divine intervention is necessary when all the ways around you have been blocked. It's as if there is no way again. All of a sudden, the Almighty comes in and begins to help you. The Almighty will come and help you in a way that you yourself will know that it's not your effort, it's not your strength, it is Him that wants to help you. If you know that you are going to have divine intervention tonight, shout hallelujah. Let your amen be loud. Let me share one more testimony with you before I now tell you what to do. We had a sister, a medical doctor. She was supposed to take a final examination. That examination, you are only allowed to try three times. Once you fail the third time, that's it. In that examination, you'll be invited to a room and a lot of professors will be there and they'll be looking at you. They've been asking you questions and once you fail, they will tell you you have failed. This sister took the exam first time, she failed. She took the exam second time, she failed. She had only one more chance now. She, she fasted for three days. She didn't eat anything because of this examination. So she now went to the exam all that day. The first person went in and came out crying. He had failed. Second person went in, came out crying, he had failed. With the first seven persons came out crying, they failed. It was the turn of this. In fact, the sister already started crying. Say, ha, ah, what kind of woman did they bring there today that are failing everybody? So she got inside. The professor said, Welcome. She couldn't answer. <laughs> they asked her the first question. She did not even understand the question. You know, it's when you understand the question, you begin to answer it. She didn't even understand the question. She was so confused. So, uh, there was a patient lying on the bed. They were supposed to examine the patient. She was so, so confused. And she knew that she were, they were going to throw her out. So, in her confusion, she was so confused. She held the patient wrist with her right hand. And she was lifting up her wristwatch to check how many more minutes she had before they threw her out. As she lifted up her wristwatch, and she held the patient wrist with one hand. All the seven professors shouted, Yes, you got it. You got it. That is the answer. You got it. That's the answer. You got it. That's the answer. He said, All the students who came here, the first thing they were supposed to do was to check the pulse of the patient. Say, All of them did not check the pulse of the patient. You are the first person here who, should, who checked the pulse of the patient. She said, Yes. <laughs> But she knew that she was not checking the pulse of any patient. She was just looking at her wristwatch to look at how many more minutes she had before they throw her out. That was how she passed the examination. God made her to pass. And con God convinces her that it is not by your power. It is not by your strength. But I want you to pass this examination. That's why the Bible says, not by power, not by strength, but by my spirit, said the Lord. That's why the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. That's why the Bible said the battle is not for the strong. Neither is the race for the swift. When they say get on your mark, get set, go. The first person to jump forward doesn't mean he will win. The battle is not to the strong. But not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. You could be talented and be a failure. You could be brilliant, but be a, fail be, be, be a failure. A lot of brilliant people have been crushed to death in their destiny. A lot of brilliant people have been made useless. So this is why you need to pray tonight for a divine intervention. You say, how do I secure this divine intervention? The first thing to do if you want all, the almighty God to intervene in your situation is to surrender your life to him. You may be living your life your own way. It will end to nothing. You will get nothing out of it. God has a plan for you and it's a good plan. And if you want him to process that plan, you need to surrender your life to him. 
You need to let the whole world know that you are now a child of God. So the first thing to do, surrender your life to Jesus. The second thing to do, if you want a divine intervention, is that worry must die in your life. Worry will keep you busy, but it won't get you anywhere. Worry is a sinner brother of fear. Worry will just confuse your destiny, waste your life, and do all kinds of things for you. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. Worry must die in your life. The third thing you should do if you want divine intervention is to pray until something happens. You pray violent prayers until something happens. And that's what we want to do here today. Violent prayers. Not ordinary prayers. Violent prayers. Prayers to bring down the hands of God in any situation that the hand of God is. It will bring it down upon your head. Jesus is here. And his power is in this place. If you pray here tonight and you lose your voice, but there is divine intervention, <laughs> you have made a good bargain. But if you behave like a gentleman, when the Bible says, as from the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. If you fail to become violent and you are allowed today to go, today, this kind of day will not come again. So make up your mind here tonight that, look, the enemy must bow or bend, and your land must be healed. Your land must receive deliverance. Make, it's a personal decision. You have to make up your mind. The Bible says the, man, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The last time I was here, I think I shared this with you. Anybody who has ever gone to worry to preach, we know that in worry, when you speak English, somebody speaks pidgin English. In worry. So I got to one of our churches to preach in worry. And they gave me this interesting interpreter who was interpreted to pidgin English. So I began to quote from the book of Isaiah chapter 35. I said, a highway shall be there, and a way it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not move therein. The wayfarers, though fools, will not err therein. When I said the wayfarers, though fools, will not err therein, my interpreter said, hey, hey. the people where they work out for the road, even though they be mumu, they not go miss road. So I looked at him. I said, what you are saying is better than my English. Okay, I went on. I said, there are plenty of people here who are suffering from constant witchcraft attack. My interpreter said, hey, hmm, people, there are plenty here. Oh. We winch. It is soft Nepal bill for their head. <laughs> Amen. And if you think about it, the Nepal bill will be constant, but the light will not be constant. And I went to this verse. As from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. When I said the violent take it by force, my interpreter said, the people will not go greedy. They will take them by greedy, greedy. Amen. How do you want to take it tonight? <laughs> the violent take it by, by force. That is the kind of prayer that can bring divine intervention. Elijah was in a situation. Elijah spoke to the heavens to close the heavens. Said there shall be no rain or dew for three and a half years. Elijah shut the heavens and put the key in his pocket. Now the same Elijah wanted to bring down the rain. It now became more difficult to bring down. <laughs> so he started his violent prayer. Seven times, first prayer, check. Say no, nothing yet, sir. Second time, check. Nothing yet, sir. Third time, check. Nothing yet, sir. Until he prayed seven times. And he prayed in a strange way. He put his head between his knees and was praying his violent prayer. His violent prayer brought the rain. The same man who had prayed before to bring fire from heaven, now prayed again to bring water from heaven. The Bible says, Elias was a man like us, and he prayed fervently. I pray that tonight. The kind of prayer you will pray here, will give you dumbfounding testimonies. In the name of Jesus. There was somebody who was in trouble. They were going to deport him from a foreign country. He had tried everything 
nothing. I was about traveling out of that country when I got a phone call. She had a PhD in microbiology. I used to know her when we were students. They wanted to deport her and her children. So I now said, ah. I said to this money is a court case. I said, ah, but I'm traveling out now. I said, well, uh, pray for me, pray for me. We just pray that, oh Lord, oh God, arise and intervene. That was the prayer. And we prayed that simple prayer and left it. She said, when she got to the court, they read a case. And as he read the case, the judge said, uh, yes, what is it? The prosecutor began to talk again. I said, shut up. He said this and that. I said, no. The woman wants to talk. I said, don't talk. Uh, and all the questions they were now asking the woman, the judge was answering it. <laughs> he said, you don't talk. You keep quiet. Let me answer them. So the judge was the one answering the prosecutor. He said, yes, uh -huh. and so what? Uh, this, that, 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 that is supposed to have details. I said, and so? Uh, how about this? He said, and so? The, the man tried the case. That was how God intervened in our situation. The power of divine intervention. Rise up on your feet now. This is a short message. Just to tell you the kind of prayers we need to pray. All eyes closed. We have very short time here again tonight. But I'm here to help you. I'm here to give you maximum assistance. If you are here tonight and you say, Pastor, <laughs> I want God to intervene in my situation. I don't like the way my life is going. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Uh, I'm only going to count 10. Once I finish counting 10 and you are not here at the front, then I believe maybe you don't want to surrender your life to Jesus. Then it will not be my fault if you don't allow the Almighty to repair your life or intervene, intervene in your destiny. So if you are here tonight, say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to get born again. I don't want this kind of life again. I want a divine intervention. Just find a way. Just leave that seat and run very quickly to the altar here. Because once I finish counting, that means you don't want to do it. And then we'll go on with our program tonight. It will not be my fault, whatever happens. One, two, three, four, five. Amen. There are two persons that should join them here. God specially brought you here tonight. Because the enemy has given you a short time to live. But God brought you here so he can intervene in your life so that you will not die on timely death. Those two persons that sit here, they are not joining them yet. I'm just going to give you one minute to quickly come and join them. Don't waste time. God brought you here for that purpose. Leave your seat. You know yourself, those two persons. The enemy is already trying to kill you. So find a way to the front very quickly. Don't allow them to succeed in your life. That's why, that's why God brought us here. So come here quickly. Come and join them. You are supposed to be here. What are you doing in that place? Surrender, come and surrender your life to Jesus. Amen. Okay, sir. That's all right. Those of you at the frontier, I congratulate you. You've taken the most important decision in life. And your life will no longer remain the same. Just close your eyes where you are. And say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus. I come before you tonight. Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from tonight, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. And I thank you for this decision they've taken tonight. I pray that the decision will be permanent in their lives in the name of Jesus. The almighty God will keep you standing. His power shall be upon your life mightily. Beginning from today, your life shall have a divine testimony. 
Any power that does not want your life to move forward shall be disgraced. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus, then we pray. Open your eyes and look at me. You've taken the most important decision in life, and I want to help more. Look at look at these pastors over there. Just just go and gain for one minute, and then come back and gain. Just go straight to my right hand. God bless you. Just go straight to them. Straight. Just follow that man. God bless you. God bless you. Bow down your heads wherever you are now. And ask the Lord to forgive you of any sin that will debar divine intervention in your life tonight. Whatever will not make God to intervene in your situation, ask him to forgive you. Because the, this place has been surrounded by the angels of the living God. And they have assignments to carry out. Anything at all that will prevent you from receiving that divine intervention, ask the Lord to forgive you. Jesus is here. His power is in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The first prayer I want you to pray. <laughs> in places where they had prayed that prayer very well, there is nobody who went on without testimony. And I want you to pray that prayer here tonight. This is not a time to joke. Live from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. As we pray this first prayer, if you are in this meeting tonight and something has been telling you you are going to die, you are going to die, you are beginning to have strange dreams, sometimes dreams of dead people, please, as we want to start praying this first prayer, find a way to this altar here and be on your knees so that that spirit of death can go back to the senders. You've been having strange dreams. Something is telling you you are dying. You are dying. Just find a way to the altar here and be on your knees. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. This is your time of deliverance and it will be a tragedy if you keep quiet while the miracle is going on. Everybody will open their mouth like fire and like, like thunder. Pray the way you have never prayed before. Please, this is a very serious matter. Not, this is not something you joke with. Let your voice be loud as we shout this prayer loud and clear. Say, any power that wants me to die. Can I hear you shouting that loud? Those of you at this altar, let your voice roar like thunder. Everybody shout it loud. Die! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. It. Jesus is here. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. That's why Jesus brought you here. You shall not die but live to declare the works of Jesus. Jesus, then we pray. Those of you at the altar here, begin to shake your head. Shake it vigorously. As we shake it vigorously, the arrow of death will begin to fly out. Don't be afraid. Shake it, shake it. Yes, that's the power of God coming upon you. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. You have been harassing her for too long. Let her go. Yes, that's the power of God coming upon you. You the serpent power. Release her. Release her. In the name of Jesus. You the serpent power. Release her. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Aha. Yes. Arrow of infirmity. Get out. Get out. The arrow of infirmity. Out. 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 Out of infirmity, get out in the name of Jesus. Father, I commit this your children unto your holy hands. I decree upon your life that you shall not die but live to declare the works of Jesus. Any strange power pursuing you shall be buried tonight. Beginning from tonight, the Pharaoh of oppression that you have seen, you shall see them no more. 
receive your deliverance. Receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Anybody on the floor, leave them on the floor. The Lord is still working on them. Anybody on the floor, just leave them on the floor there. The Lord is still working on them. The next prayer I want you to pray. As you pray this prayer, if you notice that you have been having problems with your brain, it's as if something is going wrong with that head. It, has, it is not assimilating. It is behaving funny. You are having strange headaches. Something is not right with that head. Run quickly to the altar here and be on your knees. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Every power dying with my destiny. Is that the loudest you can shout it? Let your voice be loud. You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Those of you at the altar, stretch your right hand towards me now. Stretch your right hand towards me. Father, these hands that are stretched towards me here, let these hands receive the fire of God. Let these hands receive the power of God. Let these hands receive the anointing of God. Let these hands receive the power of deliverance. Let his hands receive the power of blessing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I suck your hands. In the name of Jesus. I suck your hands in the blood of Jesus. Now you are going to slap that head seven times with your hand. One. You are not slapping it well. One. Two. Something is happening already. That's right. You the serpent in the head. Come out. Three. Aha. Aha. Let that head go. Let that head go. Stop moving about in her head. Let her go. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Father, I commit your children now into your holy hands. Beginning from today, power to be the head and not the tail. Receive it now. Any power contesting with your memory, any power contesting with your brain, any power contesting with your memory, contesting with your intelligence. Makapota ribo sepinda kaya boshanda raba ribo kapula katanta. Let the power depart now in the name of Jesus. Receive the fire upon that head now. Receive the fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. If you have been failing before. You will now begin to pass. If you have been average, you shall be catapulted to the top. In the name of Jesus. And any power that does not want you to remain at the top, I bury them now. In the name of Jesus. One more time. Slap that again. One, two, three, four. That's right. You must be released. That's right. Five, six, seven. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. The Lord has done great things in your life. 
You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. There is power, power, one that walk in power. In a precious blood of the land. There is power. Power. One that walk in power. In the blood of the land. There is power. Power. One that walk in power. In the precious blood of the land. There is power. There is power. Power. One that walk in power. In the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder, walking power, in the precious blood of the Lamb. As you pray this next prayer, if you notice here, your dream life is a battlefront. Anytime you sleep is a battle. Strange dreams, strange attacks. Find a way to this altar very quickly now. Because your dream life is your spiritual monitor. It tells us what is going on in your life in the spirit realm. Your dream life is a battlefront. Sometimes you're even afraid to sleep. Find a way to this altar here and be on your knees. Pray the way you have never prayed before. Pray the way you have never prayed before. Everybody in this crusade, let your voice roar like thunder in this violent prayer. Any power assigned to waste my life you are a liar Damn! in the name of jesus don't negotiate with the devil this is not a day to negotiate not a day to negotiate not a day to negotiate the power of God in the name of Jesus move amen something is going to happen to 35 persons the wind of the Holy Ghost will flow upon you and when that wind gets on you you may not be able to stand on your feet but what's going to happen is that any long term problem in your body will just vanish as that wind begins to blow, the wind is going to blow on 34, 35 persons. When the wind blows, that thing that has been tormenting you, that thing that has been harassing your life, all of a sudden, it will fall off. Yes, that's the wind. It's blowing now. It's blowing now. It's blowing now. That's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes, that's the wind. That's the wind. It's blowing upon you. That's right. That's right. Father, I'm praying now in this meeting. Anybody who is under the control of domestic witchcraft, anybody who is under the control of household enemies, be released now! In the name of Jesus! Be released now! 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 In the name of Jesus! Father, I pray for your children at the altar. At every witchcraft programming into their dreams, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Beginning from tonight, any dark power that ventures to enter into your dream shall be buried alive. Power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy. Receive that power in the name of Jesus. Say, oh God, arise and let my story change. Can you shout that loud? Shout it again. Shout it again. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let my story change. In Jesus' name we pray. Right there where you are. I want you to pick three 
prayer request. Three things you want the Lord to use to mark today for you. That you want the Lord to do to mark today. To the three things I say, well, when I came for the crusade at Yaba College of Technology, this is what I asked the Lord to do. Mention three things to the Lord now. I give you one minute to do so. Jesus is here. He says, open wide your mouth and I will feel it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The God that answered by fire shall answer you by fire in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your children here. And I thank you for the rector, the workforce, and this institution. Father, I commit this institution unto your holy hands. Soak it in the blood of your son. In the name of Jesus. Take control of everything that happens here. Today, let your power, your angels be deposited in this compound. Promote this institution. Bless this institution. Let darkness never find its way here. Let any darkness buried there be uprooted and catch fire. In the name of Jesus, let this place move forward by fire. In the name of Jesus, any power contrary to the power of God in this vicinity, Beginning from tonight, this place is not your habitation. Get out in the name of Jesus. To you, Father, be the glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now, stretch your two hands to this altar here. Your two hands to me at the altar here. You need to stretch your hands to pray this prayer. Say, every good thing the enemy has stolen from my life. I possess them now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray it. Repossess them. Repossess them. Possess them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Keep those hands straight towards me. And keep your eyes closed. Father, I'm praying for these persons who are here. Presently being controlled from the waters. That water power that is controlling your life. In the name which is above all names. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, be released from their grip now. Anyone here being manipulated from the place of birth, right there where you are, the hand of God is coming upon you. The yoke of the manipulation, I command it to be broken now. In the name of Jesus, anyone here with any form of infirmity, I bind the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Silence now, beloved. There are 12 persons here. You are being controlled by witchcraft powers that wants to destroy you. They have already put a ladder in your life. They climb into your life the way they like. But those persons now, where they are the power of God is going to come upon them and that yoke will be broken instantly that's number one